On to our next question. What specific steps would you take to bridge the city's multi-million dollar budget deficit? And would you include a proposal by the city manager, an idea he has floated, for a sales tax measure? We're going to start with Ms. Moreno. No. You could answer this in a full manner. Okay. <laughs> Um, the o the only way our city manager our, our nice city manager by the way I do I do actually like him um, uh, you know the only way we're going to get through these budget cuts is through to cut services that is really the only tool we have available for um, our ourselves is to cut services across the board across the board straight Police, across fire everything yes well I mean. There's nothing else we can do. I mean, they were on a spending spree for the last 10 years. I mean, at some time we're gonna have to pay the piper and it's now. Ms. Martinez? Yes, the cuts have to be made across the board, but no, I don't believe that we have to really sacrifice people's jobs. There could be, um, we, we just have to analyze and see what it is that we're gonna take away from each place where people still continue to have their jobs. What about public safety? Should there be cuts to public safety? <sighs> public safety is important, but it has to be across the board. Mr. Davis. Well, I think that uh, it's pretty important to us that we understand the primary duty of government is protection of our public and the citizens in which we serve. Uh, you asked a specific question is what would specifically cut? That's something that we have been vetting for the citizens, but I can tell you, in my uh, assessment, in a detailed assessment, we can eliminate two of the uh, assistant chief positions, saving $500,000, where we have four captains supervised by four chiefs. That's a problem, too top heavy. Cut the mayor's budget to a total of $280,000 and eliminating a lot of the fluff that happens within that department for the next two years. A two-year elimination of the city grant funding, which recaptures about $220,000 back to the general fund to pay for public safety. And I ask that uh, each public, uh, each department of the 10 departments that we identified uh, will save an, an additional $50,000 on the average, returning $500,000 to uh, the uh, general fund for support of public safety. And then we have to look at the, uh, the uh, condition of what we have, not only with the FOX program, which is coming up, for their 4% savings as well as the, the convention center savings. Would you support so a sales tax measure floated by the city manager? Uh, I think that once we vet it through the people and we understand that uh, costs rise in all businesses and the city is a form of a business, that uh, we have to look at the, the, the pendulum. It, we do not somehow or another increase our revenues. Right now, our revenues exceed our expenses. It is very important for us to understand how business works. What fluff is in the mayor's office? Well, you have $60,000, the various other uh, committees and stuff that comes within the mayor's office, and plus the money that uh, we seem to uh, uh, get allocated to the Long Arts of Knights Innovation, which should be a private venture through nonprofit rather than through government. Uh, so that and with the additional 40000 he gets for the other departments or, or the other commissions that has been created within the office for them to support their mission, they need to go out and fundraise like everyone else does. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, he right now has a 1.2 total all-in budget. We uh, need to reduce that down to $220,000 and have a staff of five. Why a ceremonial mayor has such a large budget when we are the policymakers as council is beyond us, and a lot of the members of the council are asking that question and wondering why. So Mr. Mayor, how would that. you respond? Is there fluff in your budget? First of all, it's not just a ceremonial mayor. That is one part and a very small part of what I do and what the charter calls for. The charter calls for, as was read earlier, the mayor to be involved in policy, right, in policy discussions, not the exclusive policy leader of the city, but in partnership with the public and with the council to make policy and then to speak about and interpret those to the public as well as being an ambassador to the sister cities and on and on. So it's not just ceremonial duty. I've cut my budget and cut from eight FTEs, eight individuals, to seven individuals. Um, we have cut every year and given back to the general fund every year. Um, we don't spend money uh, going on international trips as Mr. Davis has, $5,000 taxpayer money that he used, public money to take a trip to China. Um, I would lead by example again cut the mayor's budget, and he voted on every mayor's budget in the last four years. He increased the budget just last year. So I don't know what he's talking about in terms of cutting down to $200,000, but that's not going to be an effective mayor that the public 
deserves and expects. Ms. Melendez, do you believe? I need to respond to that, sir. I mean, I think that's pretty important. Simply on that one point? One point. I did not vote for last year's budget. I voted no. Three of us voted no because there was a problem with the budget that we're experiencing now. We knew it. He knew it. They passed it anyway on a 4-3 vote. So let's make that correction. You can't pass a budget on I a 4-3 vote. You have I to have went five to votes China to pass a budget. On the request and the direction of the city council. The first trip when we brought Solar Max here, I paid for out of my pocket. You want to be able to uh, go out and do certain things within the city. It costs money to expect for me on the behalf of the council to go to China and to business develop on my dime. Well, it's going to cost you money so to make money. If Once it again, costs that's the role of the mayor. If it costs money to market the city, Mr. Davis, where will the money come from for a Mayor Davis administration if you've cut the budget to $250,000? You fundraise. Is that the role of the mayor to fundraise so that the mayor can then market the city? In tough times, you better believe it. Are we in tough times? Yes, we are. Do economic factors indicate we're in tough times? Uh, well, if you're looking at the macroeconomics piece of it as the country, no. But our city, yeah, because of mismanagement and misappropriation, and I call it misfeasance of accounting, yes, we are. Ms. Melendez, would you support a cut in the mayor's budget, yes or no? Yes. Ms. Moreno? Yes. Ms. Martinez? Yes. We need to get back to Mr. Bailey. And the question was or is, what specific steps would you take to bridge the city's multi-million dollar budget deficit? Would you support the city manager's idea to float a sales tax? Well, once again, this is why he was hired, to come in and look more deeply at our budget and go from a one-year annual budget to a two-year budget, five-year financial plan. This is exactly why we brought this leadership team into Riverside because of experience there in Alameda and what he did to cure the financial issues um, up north. And so he's doing that and it's, it's some hard decisions that the council has to make. Um, and we're going through that from, it's been six months truly, of budget hearings and uh, talks, including the unions in those talks, including the public in those talks, six meetings previous. Now we have a budget hearing starting at noon today. We've never had all the departments come in front of the council to tell us what their needs are, unfunded needs, as well as where they're going to cut when it comes to the potential budget deficit that is over the next two years. And so we're going to go through it with a fine tooth comb. We're going to look at every line and figure out how to, to make it work in the long run for Riverside. Uh, Ms. Melendez? We definitely need this budget review process. Um, in the upcoming budget, um, it has been stated that last year's deficit was uh, um, caused somewhat by um, under uh, revenues not being accounted appropriately. Or we were asked to conserve, and we conserved, and now we have less revenue coming in. Um, we went into a budget with um, what we thought was a $1 million surplus, but we also went into this budget with an uh, unfunded contract for um, our police department. So all those numbers just didn't work. We had a $1 million surplus and we funded a $4 million contract for police services. I'm not saying that's not necessary, I'm just saying that it was poor budget planning that went into this process. We need to take a look at every department's budget and as the mayor said, that will start happening today. And we need to look at everything, every line item in those budgets. Um, it's not just um, uh, employees, we should not cut jobs. We need to stay on task and we need to look at the fat that there is in this budget. Um, do we have uh, $3,000 here for um, uh, conferences or some other things that we could do otherwise with? We really need to look at the, at the hardcore money and, and see where we can cut. Would you support the city manager's idea with regard to sales taxes? As the mayor, that would be something that we would take to the city, to the residents, and say, what do you think of this? First, we need to know how much of a sales tax and for how long and what specifically and what areas would these funds go to. So there's lots of details involved in that, but it certainly would be an idea to float. I wouldn't say that I would support it right off the bat. We'd have to see where the community feels. Okay, 